Welcome to The Secret Witch Show, the podcast providing a safe and alchemical altar space of conversations which help powerful women escape a half-hearted, spiritless society and rediscover the freedom of living a wildly magical life. Every other week, we explore how to cast aside the wounds of shame, guilt and fear connected with fully being yourself, so you can grant yourself permission to stop hiding, ground soulfully back into your body, illuminate your whole soul desires, tend your soul, rediscover and reclaim your powerful gifts, express your magic and manifest your wildest alchemy. There's no better place to become who your heart longs to be. This is where we will guide you into liberation. I'm your host, Nicole Barton, and I'm so excited to dive in. Welcome, sweethearts, and oh, is my heart so full to be back for this brand new year. Wow, what a journey uh, last year was with the rebirth of our archetypal apothecary healing modality. I was reflecting on this actually the other day and had a very kind of like pinch me moment, you know, these moments when you're just like, wow, this is actually what I do, like this is magical. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was... Um, having one of those moments the other day thinking about what we've created when I spent the day doing soul readings for women which is a new gorgeous offering I'm so so excited about this one um yeah uh, it's just delightful to do that to help women discover their gifts and I was doing healing sessions and I had one-to-one clients that were moving me to tears with what they have created and the courage that they have and the vulnerability that they have and I realised that it's rare that I ever share on the podcast about the deeper ways to work with me because there are so many lower cost options that I'm proud of, um, free and low investment. Um, But I've just opened a place in my patent alchemical altar space in this new year for a sensitive woman who longs to become a healer but feels all the fear to go deeper into her inner work of soul initiation and learn to heal herself and open to discovering her gifts. Um, It's a six month journey of self healing that's for you really, if you're really feeling it is the right time to commit to your heart led vision and take the tender steps forwards. Um, So if you think that that might be a fit for you, I hold alchemy calls to discover the alignment and it is really for women who want to be held deeply in their self healing as they heal themselves, as they tune into their own wisdom, as they discover their gifts and who are willing to learn to hold themselves in the fear as well and courageously step in to learn that all parts of them are welcome and that they can become the healer they long to be even if you're convinced that you can't if that's not for you that's absolutely fine too just enjoy our free resources enjoy our lower investment crucibles we'll soon have another one to share um and for now enjoy the show but if that is for you then do reach out um at info at nicolebarton.co.uk and we can explore if there's any alignment for either of us for now though on the secret witch show today i'm speaking to one of the common patterns of the many sensitive souls who were born here with healing gifts which is people pleasing exploring how people pleasing is almost a sign of being a healer i dive into the fears and patterns beyond people pleasing that are kind of lie underneath and how self-illumination is a powerful tool to help women begin to heal themselves of this wound In this episode, I explore how and why our culture has had us learn to run around looking after everyone else first, along with the importance of self-healing inner work around people-pleasing, and especially why it's one of the most important patterns to liberate if you are wanting to help others heal themselves, along with why vulnerability is the key to it all. It's a juicy one. Let's dive in. Welcome, magical ones, as ever, to what is feeling like a really juicy episode, actually. Um, It's the episode called How to Stop People Pleasing in Relationships So You Can Open to Your Gifts as a Healer. And there was quite a lot of, um, yeah, excitement about this episode in our Secret Rich Society, which if you haven't joined, you're very welcome to. Um, So I know it's a potent one. I know it's something that I have journeyed deeply with myself and has been coming up a lot for me, actually, recently 
over Christmas because I'm just recording this it's my first one back recording in January so I'm sure many people have been experienced this over Christmas and uh, <laughs> it's perfect timing actually maybe it's not actually maybe I should have done it before Christmas um, but yeah here we are so I love this episode I love the topic of people pleasing um because especially when women are here to be healers because I think it's almost like the very sign of being a healer that we people please it's like this sense of like we've come here to help people if we're healers <laughs> so we kind of like have the wounding of that as well it's like there's this kind of deep sense of wanting to help people that can often trans transpire into this kind of wounded way of helping people of going into people pleasing and so it is kind of like one of the signs of being here to be a healer that we will people please we also as healers tend to be sensitive ones so there's this kind of sense of like shaming ourselves for our deep needs and therefore dismissing them in order to help others so that we're kind of loved and approved of rather than you know being seen as too needy or you know having too many sensitive needs i know um a gorgeous soul in our group talked about uh, the book by um elaine aron the highly sensitive person um when i mentioned that i was recording this so again like there's this deep sensitivity in healers that can kind of transcribe into people pleasing because of the wounding that we have around our sensitivity and it's really, really important as we dive into this topic, particularly to remember that this is largely something that is coming from wounding. And because of that wounding, like we haven't usually been met ourselves in childhood as little girls, as sensitive little girls as well. And so what can often happen for women who are sensitive is that they can then literally spend their lives making sure that we don't then cause that same pain for others that we don't put on other people. So we run around looking after other people, making sure that they're being met because we haven't been met ourselves and we know the pain of that. And in particular, this is one of the one of the things, you know, we think about the the wounded healer, the the, you know, we if we're born to be healers, we usually will have journeyed through wounds that kind of point us in that direction, that show us that this is actually what we're here for. And she kind of needs to heal this wound for herself so that she can go on to help others without rescuing them again many women often say to me you know oh, i'm really sensitive got really sensitive energy how can i be a healer when i'm kind of like feeling everybody's energy and often there's this sense of like healers feeling burned out by absorbing other people's energy and and again it can be that kind of sense of like we're picking up we're people pleasing we're always like trying to help and hold everyone's energies without realizing unconsciously we're kind of taking on everybody's stuff and that's another way that people pleasing can show up for women who are here to be healers and I was thinking today as I was um, contemplating what I was going to share about in this episode about how I'm teaching Aurum just about to teach Aurum our uh, group journey all around the reclamation of our power and I thought about it for a while because um, one of the things that I was teaching in or I'm teaching in our taster of Aurum is around what's called the, the victim triangle or the dry, drama triangle. I personally don't love that name because I think the word victim is almost like a shameful word um, or you know it can be perceived that way so when I'm meeting women in that triangle um, with the with the view of helping them off the triangle of course um, there's like this sense of like remembering rather than judging ourselves as victims or making ourselves wrong for being on this triangle and I'll explain more about the triangle in a minute but rather than making ourselves wrong for being victims it's like the deeper invitation is to see that the reason we're on the triangle in the first place is because of wounding because our little girl learned how to protect herself um by being somewhere on this triangle so what I mean by the triangle the triangle I call it the triangle of leaking our power which isn't quite as beautiful as the victim triangle, the drama triangle, but still, <laughs> I'm going to come up with a better word for it, a better phrase. Um, but in essence, there's three places, of course, it's a triangle, on this triangle that we can go to when we get triggered. And when we're, when we're um, people-pleasing, we tend to be triggered more because we will be 
very overstimulated our nervous systems will likely be shot and there can be this kind of real like revving of our nervous system so when we're in that place in that state there often is we do end up going somewhere on this triangle so there's three places on the triangle that we can go when we're triggered which will happen more when we're people pleasing um the first place I'm going to do them in in reverse order because I feel like the the last one's the most important one to talk about. Um, But the the first one we can go to is victim. This will often be where we feel quite helpless. We feel like we've got no power. We feel in victim to someone else, which can actually be a place that we do go when we have been people pleasing. There's almost like this sense of like, oh my God, I just can't get out of this pattern. And that's what we're going to be talking to today. But the, the second place is that we can become a persecutor, which can also happen when we're people pleasing, because we can be like, okay, now I've had enough of people pleasing, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do any more, we'll set a harsh boundaries like, they made me people please, like becoming this real kind of persecutor and like angry with the person that we've been people pleasing, um, because we haven't seen that it's actually us that is choosing to people please. I know it really won't feel like that, so bear with me. <laughs> a journey to that because again this is about owning our power and largely we haven't seen that we have the choice not to people please until this point the third one that is probably most commonly the reason why we will people please in the first place is rescuer we can go into rescuer we can want to fix others we can want to make sure everything's okay for someone else we can deny our own needs and like as, as i was talking about this sensitivity didn't shaming our needs has us often in this place of rescuing others as well so that's not to say that you'll always be in a rescuer position when you're people pleasing there can be other you can be in persecutor you can be in victim but essentially all of these are ways of leaking our power these three things and they're kind of yeah when when we are people pleasing we're usually in one of those unless of course it's not people pleasing at all and we've consciously chosen to help someone which is very different (laughs) so so it's like really what we're talking about here is when we say how to stop people pleasing it's really what we're saying is how to make our helping of others more conscious and intentional um and chosen fully chosen it's like realizing we have the power to choose which of course when we're in this people pleasing pattern we will tend to feel like we haven't got choice i always think about um what remedy i'm serving in each of these um episodes if you have not if this is your first time listening then um i teach uh, the um i've created and teach the archetypal apothecary healing modality which is about working with our own inner Uh, archetypal remedies to heal ourselves and the remedy that I'm serving today is what I'd call archetypal pulsatilla. Archetypal pulsatilla tends to be a people pleaser because we'll go more into her in 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 a little while but she's like that she's called the windflower I believe and there's this sense of like this sensitive delicate little flower kind of blowing in the wind running around doing what everybody else needs not really consciously choosing her life bless her heart like this is often a state that we can go into when we've been abandoned as children um there can be this sense of like having to people please like we feel compelled to people please because there's this deeper fear underneath that of being abandoned of being left of not being loved anymore so we'll come to that because there's also other reasons it may may or may not be just that there's other reasons that pulsatilla would people please as well um but in essence, we're working with the archetypal remedy of pulsatilla, which is this kind of delicate, sensitive little flower that blows in the wind. And we're going to talk to, to talk to that a little bit more later, but it's helpful to put it into that context, because often when we people please, we can feel like we haven't got choice. We haven't got choice, that we're not choosing it, that we're at the mercy of others, that kind of victim element of the triangle. And... The way this way of living, whilst we can often feel like it's we don't have choice, it it really can have an impact in our relationships. It can have us feeling, like I said, kind of like um, really angry, really annoyed, really um, hopeless, really disconnected from whoever we're people pleasing, from disconnected from ourselves. 
we can feel quite resentful and we can shame ourselves we can guilt ourselves for that as well but our relationships kind of struggle when we're in a people pleasing place um but it can also have an impact in being a healer uh, with, with the, the episodes about um, how to stop people pleasing so you can open to your gifts as a healer and if we are rescuing people as healers a we're like really you know going to be feeling that in our own energy so if you are like kind of absorbing everyone's energy it's likely that that is coming down to a people pleasing deep people pleasing energetic pattern energetic wound and if we rescue people we're also ironically stopping them from having going through and experiencing and healing the pain that their soul actually chose into i believe that we came here with a soul plan that we all came here to live out certain experiences that we can heal and alchemize for ourselves and if we are rescuing people we are stopping them from going through and finding their power through their initiations through these kind of points of rites of passage that that their soul chose into so the second we start to people please and take away people's pain as healers we are denying them their power and then i'm going to talk more to this because there's a lot more around like the healing quick fix route that is so typical in our modern culture that that really does people from healing themselves because it is rescuing them it's giving them the idea that they just outsource their pain to someone else and then it's it's gone talk more to that because the real question is how do we stop so if you're like in this sense of like people pleasing and you're feeling feeling like well i don't know i'm not convinced that i'm actually you know able to change this then just my invitation is to really bring a lot of love to that place of you and and really just stay open to what I'm going to share in this conversation. Because the first thing really that we want to do, the most important thing, and this is um, one of the eight elements of the archetypal apothecary path is what I call self-illumination. Um, I believe it's actually a theme for the group in our Secret Witch Society this month. If I'm thinking about when this episode is going to be released, I'm hoping I've got the right month. But anyway, we will have explored it by the time that this <laughs> comes out, uh, or we'll be exploring it by the time this comes out. But self illumination is so key to our healing. And this is really the biggest difference between going to a healer and expecting a quick fix and, like, you know, having a Reiki session and thinking the work's done. And the real deep art and science of healing, like self-illumination, understanding our patterns around people pleasing, especially for this, like is so, so important. This is where the deep inner work comes in, which is really the true art of real healing. This is real healing we're talking about here. And self-illumination is key to that. It's like the real major difference. And so the how of stopping it's really like one of the most important elements is this self-illumination of our patterns around people pleasing. So the first thing, if you are a people pleaser, if you're starting to do that self-illumination and realise actually, maybe I do have this kind of people pleasing wound, this people pleasing pattern, like you're beginning to notice already, this is self-illumination in action already. And we can deepen into different levels of that and go into higher potency of self-illumination. So start to notice and I say this and people are like well, what does what does that mean and like really is that going to be that powerful and I always say to people do not underestimate the power of noticing because noticing is what elevates us it's what elevates us into our power so we can always like rise above what's going on and look down on the situation and be like oh bless my little girl bless her heart like she's learned to keep herself safe to stop herself from being abandoned by pleasing people. Like we can elevate above and look down on her and go, oh my God, bless her heart. And this is the way that real healing happens because real healing cannot happen without love. And this is also, an, as you begin to start start that self-illumination journey with this with this people-pleasing pattern, my most important invitation is to begin to love yourself in this like we so often kind of criticize ourselves oh there we go people pleasing again doing my normal pattern the second we're in that we're out of a we're out of healing we're just beating ourselves up so as i always say put the beaty stick down begin to realize recognize this is an innocent pattern that your inner little girl learned to keep herself safe 
She needs love. We need to wrap her in the same love that we would provide a child. Like this is us reparenting ourselves. That elevated parent looking down into seeing what our inner child is doing with the deepest amount of love possible because whatever she's doing, it is a trauma response. If she's not in a center, if she's not grounded, if she's not feeling clean and clear and like able to say no to what feels out of alignment, if she's not saying yes to things that do feel in alignment, this is due to a trauma response. She is in a layer of wounding. We are in a layer of wounding. Our little girl is in a layer of wounding. And people pleasing is one of those layers. Like there's a, I talk about in our, in my modality, like we map out our soul plan and we have four different layers of our soul plan with different remedies in each layer. And one of the layers is the layers of remedy states that we go into in wounded states over the years. If you imagine us like an onion, right at the core is who we were born as. That's our um, constitutional remedy, archetypal remedy. We then go into like surface layers. Each time we have a wounding experience, a trauma, traumatic experience in life, we will go into a different wounding state for that particular experience. So it's almost like an onion, there's different layers. One of the surface layers of that onion is archetypal pulsatilla for some women, particularly women who are here to be healers. It's not true of everyone. Um, people who aren't magical will have different sets of their own remedies. They still have the same map, the same soul plan. It's just they'll have different remedy relationships. They'll have different archetypal remedies in their map. Um, and magical women will also have unique remedies, but this tends to be a common theme for magical women a common surface layer and that layer just wants healing the way we heal it is through working with archetypal remedies for self-illumination and and working with them in other magical ways it's like it's a, an energy healing modality but in essence this is just another surface layer wounding and, and it's helpful to remember that because our inner little girl is innocently doing this she learned this pattern as a young girl and we've kind of forgotten that and we've just lived from that pattern and beat ourselves up for doing the people pleasing so the self-illumination piece is key and how do we do that well we ask why we ask why do i people please there's usually when we're in wounding some deeper fear typically it tends to be one of three different deeper fears either control security or approval fear of losing one of those three things in my experience and of both my own life and the women that I've guided one of the biggest of those fears that triggers people pleasing is the fear of losing approval this is the, the pulsatilla pattern at its best and that's not to say it can't be the fear of losing control or security. It might be that there's a sense of like not feeling safe if we just start to heal and liberate that pattern or, you know, that, that we'll lose control if we don't people please. There's, there's always like those elements, but there would tend to be one that's stronger than another. And, and in my experience, it's often, not always, approval, the fear of losing approval. So ask, why do I people please? What is the fear that is having me people please? And then when you've got an answer, go deeper, more deeper self-illumination. Ask yourself, what does that mean? What would that mean if I lost approval? Go deeper again. And what would that mean? And keep asking yourself, and what would that mean? And what would that mean? And what would that mean? Until you feel like you've arrived at a place where you really truly understand your little girl and have heard why she keeps doing this. Ask her, dialogue with her. And we work with archetypal remedies. So again, coming back to the mirror of Pulsatilla, because she's ultimately a mirror for this aspect of yourself. You know, she's the delicate flower that blows in the wind, this kind of sensitive soul that's learned to bend and kind of flow around doing what everybody else wants instead of honoring what her true needs are because she fears being abandoned. So think about that mirror of Pulsatilla, the archetypal remedy and what she represents. What, how does she express? How, what are her or your fears that she has? How, what fears does Pulsatilla hold? Like we talk about um, in the archetype of the Curry Path, we talk about the archetypes having shadow expressions or wounding expressions and gold expressions. So the kind of the light and the dark, if you like. So in her darkness, in her shadow, in her wounding, how does Pulsatilla show up? This is almost like personality profiling, beginning to understand your own pulsatilla because there's like a generic pulsatilla that I can tell you about. There's also your unique expression of pulsatilla. So what fears does she have? 
Does she fear being abandoned? Is that why she people pleases? How does Pulsatilla express for you what traits does she have? What phrases does she use? Um, traits being like knowing she people pleases, for example. Phrases being like, oh, I just can't do any more. Or, oh, I've had enough of people pleasing. Like those are the sorts of things Like when you're saying those things, this is you in the embodiment of the wounded archetype of Pulsatilla. So start to build a picture of this archetypal remedy, Pulsatilla. If this is the remedy that you resonate with, there could be other ones that um, have this kind of people-pleasing trait. Again, it could be um, archetypal aurum that we're just about to journey with. They can, you know, this sense of like not having power, not having power to say no, um, which is also in Pulsatilla. So some, sometimes they overlap, but let's work with Pulsatilla for now and see what your version, your expression of Pulsatilla is. So again, I'm kind of going through several different elements of, um, of the archetypal apothecary path here because self-illumination is one piece. That's the understanding, the knowing why. And then it's the invocation of archetypal remedies we're talking about there. But I think even just having starting off with trying to understand what pulsatilla looks like for you is really powerful before even thinking about moving on to the next step of embodying. Also, what is her gold? Like, how does Pulsatilla express when she's healed and alchemized that fear of abandonment, that pe people pleasing? Like, what would the beautiful, sensitive windflower expression look like? My feeling is that she would be living from soul. She would know, like, know how to honor her yes and her no. Um, yeah, just deeply honoring her heart and expressing vulnerably so we're going to talk to that as well the other thing when you're doing that work when you're starting that illumination process particularly the why and working with illuminating more around this picture of pulsatilla this can bring up a lot of fear so another thing that is deeply important as you enter this work is to tend your nervous system now people often ask what i mean by that when i say tend your nervous system and really it's cultivating a sense of inner safety your body needs to know that she is safe as she goes into this work even so tending your nervous system could be something as simple as just soothing and stroking your body it could be breathing more deeply it could be speaking out like you are safe it could be having a bath, it could be having a warm cup of tea, it could be anything that has your body feeling she is safe. And that will look different for each of us. Again, I can't rescue you by telling you this is X, Y, Z, this is what you need to do to turn your nervous system. It's often a frustration of women who come into Rosa wanting me to say, yep, this is how you do it. <laughs> You will each have your own way of tending your nervous system that can help to make a list. But really just go gently is the invitation. Don't push past your soft edge. And of course, part of the self-illumination is noticing on the triangle where you go into rescuer. Like where do you typically go into rescuer? What has you go into rescuer? How do you express when you're in rescuer? The more that you can illuminate, the more you can elevate and love yourself in all of it, keep a journal of it, love yourself in it again, <laughs> tend your nervous system again, remember your little girl is scared, so that's really as to how we can start getting to work on that, the other piece about this is about bringing your heart to your vision, like what are, what do you want to create, instead of people pleasing, what is it, how would you like to live your life, like we, we can go into the healing piece, but like we also need to be very present to how we would prefer to create our lives, in terms of like, we don't want to people please, we've illuminated that, what do we want, and often the other, the other thing is like, the other question with this is like, what are your inner boundaries? And I say inner boundaries for a specific reason. My guide spoke to me about this the other day because I was having a conversation with her. And we were talking about how we can kind of get um, so fixated on our outer, outer boundaries. When we're in that kind of exhausted, wounded state of pulsatilla, when we're in that people-pleasing mode, often what happens, instead of like grounding ourselves, tending our nervous system, tending our bodies, going into the deep work, we will just kind of flip and kind of have these firm hard boundaries like this kind of uh 
like really like putting up our wall like okay we're done now we get to the point again it's innocent we're so exhausted of people pleasing the only thing we know how to do is to switch off and be like sod you and it comes from that place of being in our inner little girl and we typically set these outer boundaries from our wounding rather than from our sovereign calm centered grounded power but we rarely set our inner boundaries we rarely get clear on what's ours and what's that of others so there's a real invitation here into into like really seeing like what is it that we want to create like what is it we actually want what do we need to ask for how do we need our needs to be met so that we can be full and topped up in order to help the person that we want to help if that's if that's what we're here to do and so it's very much this kind of reclamation of the inner energetic boundaries like what is it that we want what are what are our boundaries you know even identifying that illuminating that is so so important and doing the work to see what's ours and what's others what's theirs because largely you know if we're creating people pleasing we really we really don't even look at the fact that we've kind of unconsciously innocently chosen that because of this wounding like we have allowed that to happen and that's quite painful to to actually uh, it takes a lot of courage to actually look at that so you may or may not be ready for that but the the truth is is that many times we've not even asked for our boundaries to be put in place we've not even expressed our boundaries we kind of just expect i'm speaking from personal experience here we like we expect others to just know and meet our boundaries and that's really what we've been taught as women in our culture it can show up a lot in relationships and there's a great book um i'm going to recommend called the queen's code which might seem like a little bit of an irrelevant thing we're talking about um, people pleasing but it's kind of got deeper energetic patterns that are at play often in the people pleasing pattern because so often we will just have not even asked for our needs to be met we won't have asked for our boundaries we won't have expressed our boundaries and the thing about when we're in relationship as a woman with a man speaking specifically to that dynamic here like the the masculine is wired to provide and we're talking energetic here as well um so the, the masculine is wired to provide and that's really what the queen's code book teaches it's like this kind of energetic of feminine and masculine and when we do often see this show up in our relationships this is kind of this kind of people pleasing pattern can be common in that and this not creating boundaries not meeting our needs that that is on one of the places it will show up and whether that's with our relationships with with um romantic relationships whether it's with uh, uh friends family whatever it is there's there's this we can see it show up there and often there was something that's very relevant to my journey of reclaiming my um people pleasing and in particular in relationships so we have been taught not to trust the masculine to reject the masculine to fight against the masculine as women we've been taught to fight to do it all to have it all to wear an armor and we've risen to that but what the queen's code teaches is that in doing so we've kind of unconsciously chosen to reject the needs of our sensitive feminine bodies like we're talking here about physiology our physiology was designed to be as women more sensitive more emotional more soft more nurturing with that we're going to have more sensitive needs men's physiology was designed to be logical to go out and provide and we're very we're very much talking physiology here you know they're the hunters um and so we're talking about bodies we're talking about the physiology of our bodies and what they were designed for and these are bodies that we have ignored as women bodies and their symptoms and their sensations that we have ignored as we have claimed our hard power talking about aurum aurum being feminine soft power so it's like really different from how we know power to be but we've claimed our hard power and bulldozed in the process our own boundaries our own needs and become the provider of all things to everyone innocently and in doing so we have really learned to people please to run around doing everything for everyone we as women have become the ultimate providers and we rarely know how to receive 
We rarely know how to slow down, stop, stop people pleasing and receive from others. The Queen's Code describes it as frog farming men. (laughs) That we as a culture have learned to turn princes into frogs, to reject the provision of the masculine, to reject their leadership, which is largely wired to provide for our needs as women when we express our desires. And I know that if you're listening to this, it's likely that you have some resistance um, because I had deep resistance to this at, as well, like really deep resistance to it. My old stories were that men, men were weak and useless. That is far from how I see it now. Now I open my heart to being provided for. I open to receive. I always say like we are women, we're built to open and receive. Literally, physiologically, you think about a woman and her makeup, she is built to open and receive. And the masculine is built to give, to provide. And so I really had to learn how to embody that, how to learn how to receive. And in doing so, was that there was some, some healing there for my people pleasing elements as well. Um, so now I really open my heart to being provided for, opening to receive my king's provision including meeting my needs. He actively knows my needs and desires and tells me it's time for a bath when he sees that I'm overstimulated. Now, the people pleasing Nicole from years ago would not have let that happen. (laughs) I would have had deep resistance to receiving and to to lying in a bath and being cared for. Like there was no way that old Nicole would have been, like she would have been people pleasing. She'd have been making sure everybody was cared for, everything was done. Um, because there's a sense of worthiness in doing that there's a sense of like I'm not going to be rejected and abandoned in doing that and it's taken me work with these inner energetic boundaries with the with the opening to receive with really embodying my feminine to to create that to create it that way to step out of people pleasing step out of rescuing to receive myself And when we shift and become vulnerable, soft, open, men lead, but we haven't let them. And of course, that's not to say that outer boundaries aren't important as well. So we'll likely set our outer boundaries as we go, consciously, intentionally, rather than from from this burned out place, which of course is also totally welcome. That is just us in survival mode. Like as we do the inner work, we learn to set the outer boundaries, but they're very rarely needed when we've actually set the inner boundaries and done our inner work. That is the piece that's most important. I've got to tell you this story because um, when I was talking about um, talking about the masculine and the feminine uh just before i recorded this i got a message from my childminder and lily it made it really clear that lily's learning this energetic (laughs) it made me chuckle i was like this is brilliant and so she said to her childminder oh lettuce i love lettuce i wish daddy would pick me a lettuce i wish i was a man who could pick lettuce and i thought that is just amazing like she has figured out age three that by expressing her wishes and her heart's deepest desires, that daddy's wired to provide for her and he will provide this lettuce. And that if he doesn't, she should just become a man and provide it to herself. <laughs> and uh, that really made me laugh because it's like, that's so perfect. Like she's learning um, how to receive. And the beautiful thing is that what daddy then did for her was indeed go and buy a lettuce so that when he goes to collect her he will take it with her and provide her deepest needs which my heart is so so full about but it's yeah it's it's just really you know beautiful to see like this other way this like soul-led way of relating and when I say that I also recognize it's such a challenge to heal and overcome this like it's so ingrained into our culture it takes the deep inner work it takes deep courage and the deepest thing is and this is almost like another step is like learning how to open to our vulnerability and share our truth because that's really what that requires now we can't expect to jump here without doing the inner work but once we've done the inner work and we start to be able to begin to step into like testing playing with like opening to actually start starting to express our truth 
like this is probably quite edgy um if you haven't yet done the inner work but it's like this sense of like the healing is in sharing your vulnerable truth which takes courage and this is not the kind of truth that most kind of goddess dress up paths is kind of like quick fix healing paths will teach you like this isn't about like sod you like i'm a wild witch riding a tiger and shimmying my ass at anybody who overrides my boundaries i'm going to speak the truth like that is not truth that is still wounding that's coming from persecutor this is still frog farming <laughs> so when i talk about truth i'm not saying go out and just start you know shouting and being like sod you i give up i'm doing this now which I'm not criticizing or judging because I've also been there and also we will wobble there as we as we walk this path like we go into that because we can't we can't heal and alchemize it without expressing that the talk the truth that I'm talking about here is the loving courageous vulnerable truth that it feels really really challenging to express like taking off our armor strip naked vulnerable kind of feeling that is the hardest truth and the only truth that is truth and that is the only thing that will truly heal people pleasing is this courageous loving vulnerable truth the feminine leads by expressing her feelings vulnerably i feel i feel i feel exhausted I feel overwhelmed. I feel burdened. I feel I can't do X, Y, Z. And as you begin to courageously take down your armor and share that vulnerable truth, this is why I call it feminine soft power, the softness, the emotion, the feeling, notice what begins to open up. And don't give up on the first try either. This is like a deeply, <laughs> deeply long healing process um, for, for many people. Like it's cyclical. We kind of go through and we journey with the self-inquiry and we journey with the embodiment of sharing our, sharing our feelings, the expression. And sometimes we will find it wobbly at first. It's a journey of learning to express our truth vulnerably enough and cultivate this energetic of receiving. And I'm still in the work of it, you know, that this, this is a tender first step into healing your people pleasing. And my example really was the healing and alchemizing all of that with my love, asking for my needs to be met courageously, learning also not to, not to people please, not to rescue. And I think also it showed up very much in my journey of like learning not to rescue other women as I was a healer. And that might sound really like harsh, but the second I rescue someone is the second that their power to heal themselves is taken away. And that's not to say I don't love them because love and rescuing are completely different. So just to make that clear, there's the deep, deepest, deepest, deepest amount of love felt. Hopefully you can even feel that through this past. Um, <laughs> but there's no rescuing because... And it's taken me deep, deep work to actually step into that. And as I said, there's this kind of sense of like absorbing others, as others' energy of like, we've learned to people, please. We've learned to rescue others. We've learned to help and save and, and thinking that's healing. But it's not because women need to heal themselves. People need to heal themselves. And this ties back into that quick fix outsourcing thing I so often talk about. There's no healing in that, no true healing. There's maybe activation that's um, offering us the chance to self-illuminate and go into our patterns and understand more. That's, that's exactly the purpose of those sorts of healings. It gives us material to work with. But if we don't work with it, there's no healing in it. Um, and if we rescue someone, again, by giving them a quick fix healing and not inviting them into the deep illumination, the, the inner work, that's not going to be healing for them or rescuing them. We assume that we go to healers for them to heal us. And as long as we're operating like that, we are leaking power, feeling helpless, outsourcing to others, hoping to be rescued ourselves. There's no real healing there. So our patterns just continue. 
until we learn to heal ourselves. And this is why in the Archetypal Apothecary Path, I say that this is the work of learning to heal yourself by activating your own inner apothecary, going into the deep work of self-illumination to see your patterns, to help heal yourself so that you can begin to notice, love, tend, welcome, and elevate and create change. It's the only thing that's helped me to heal myself truly. And until we learn to heal ourselves, until we say no to being rescued ourselves, that's a choice again, like we have to choose not to be rescued ourselves. And until we own our power to self-heal, we will still be going round and round in people pleasing. And when we, when women want to self-heal, we can't put them back onto the triangle because that won't help them. So they'll go back onto the triangle and go round and round and round there in their usual patterns if we if we do rescue them. Uh, one of the archetypes that I journeyed with, and it's got the themes of this in, in Pulsatilla, archetypal remedy Pulsatilla is often almost like the archetype of the princess. And I had to heal and alchemize that one big time in all of what I've been talking about today. Like there's this, and, and I still am, there's there's so many kinky pleasures to being the archetypal princess, which Pulsatilla really is, that so often women won't choose out of it. It's like so pleasurable to be a princess <laughs> that's being rescued and rescuing and like people pleasing in order to be loved. And then, you know, the, being rescued is, is a hidden benefit. There's so many that often we can't, it's really difficult to choose out of. But what happens is we get stuck in this cycle of like people pleasing to the point of burnout. Then when we've burned out, we become the martyr and we get rescued. And that can be like a, a cyclical pattern that's really difficult to choose out of because the second we start to own our power and not people please, we lose the burnout, we lose the benefits of being rescued. We lose the benefits of being a princess. It really takes a deep ownership of the level of power that we have to choose out of all of that. And that was one of the things that I struggled with most. It, felt, it was almost like this sense of grief of losing this inner princess in me. And that's a very real thing. <laughs> um, and so as a healer of healers, I have to make it very clear that I will be courageously inviting you off that triangle, off that pattern, so that you can heal yourself. I just haven't got capacity, even if I wanted to rescue you, even if it was serving, I haven't got capacity to rescue because I hold so many women. And if I did, it would remove their power. It would stop them from healing themselves. It would put them back into the quick fix scenario. And this is the same. The reason why I share this, even though it seems sort of weird and unrelated, is that if you are a true healer, if you're not here to quick fix, if you're here to help others heal, the real art and science of healing, you will need to learn to heal and alchemize your own people-pleasing tendency, your own rescuing tendency. Because if you don't, you will not be helping people. You will just be keeping people on the triangle. And you'll become exhausted in the process. You'll be people-pleasing. You'll be holding people's healing for them. You'll be feeling like a highly sensitive woman who you are, who can't use her gifts because she's so burned out from helping others. You are highly sensitive, that's why you're a healer. And true healing will not drain your energy because true healing is inviting people into ownership of their own healing power. But if you're in the shadow of people pleasing, you will, your energy will, will be drained. So if you're noticing that there's this kind of constant draining as you're trying to heal people, this is probably the pattern that's going on and this is why there's such an importance of healing this pattern. We can't really become healers without healing the wound of people pleasing. So, you know, just imagine holding a woman in her triggers whilst we're triggered ourselves, or imagine rescuing a woman from her pain when we're already burdened. This is why sensitive women feel that they can't be healers because they're taking on everyone's energy. And all we need to do really is learn how to lovingly hold space learn how to share vulnerably, learn how to listen vulnerably, learn how to meet people where they are without rescuing them. I've got one particular gorgeous client who really, really like is so, so grateful for the fact that I held the space for her to rescue herself, to heal herself. 
and I just categorically refused to heal, heal her and rescue her because this this isn't serving but I will love you in in all of that I will be here holding space for you holding loving space but you're the one who has to choose the work and so one of the costs that I one of the deep inquiries sorry that I invite women into as they're starting this journey to even see if they want to start this journey of healing people pleasing because there's been a lot here <laughs> is in invitation into costs and benefits. So before you even do any of it, look out for what are the costs of people pleasing versus the costs of healing your people pleasing wounds. Then also look at the benefits of people pleasing. There will be more than you think and the benefits of healing your people pleasing wounds. And from there you can make a more conscious choice. The choice to work with Pulse Tiller's archetypal remedy to heal people pleasing is important to make conscious. Do I really, really want to heal this? Or am I receiving princess benefits that I didn't see before? Am I willing to do the deep work to heal this? Do I want to be a true healer who invites women into their power? Or do I want to be a quick fixer who rescues people and removes their true capacity to heal? And if the answer is yes, I do, I really, really long to heal this people pleasing, then take yourself through the process I have shared today again and again and again and again and love yourself in all of it. Or also join a group journey uh, because we always look for these patterns in any of our group journeys really, um, although uh, Pulsatilla is the remedy that, you know, she shows up in uh, in different ways in other remedies as well. They've kind of got synergy, these remedies. I'm going to jump to questions because um, there was a gorgeous question and uh, lots of talk in the group, actually. Um, one woman said that it reminded her of words like power, fear, choosing, staying safe, little girl, undervalued self. And I feel like actually, <laughs> quite synchronistically, we've, uh, we've covered all of those. Um, and another woman asked a, a question. So the question is, how to get comfortable saying, yes, thank you for the suggestion, however I'm going to, dot, 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 when people ask you to do something and they assume you will say yes? And that is a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm loving, loving that question. And there's something about um, the piece about assumption then, the, the assumption that they will say yes. It's almost like, what's the fear about them having an assumption? So first and foremost, there's a, there's a, a little nugget, but... The deepest, most important thing here is, and it kind of ties into what I just said, but the most important thing here is to be in the inquiry. Like, is there a part of you that fears what will happen if you say no? Is there a part of you that fears this, like them assuming that you'll say yes and you having to disappoint them and say no? Maybe it's the piece about disappointment that's the fear. Like, But what's the fear beyond that disappointment or whatever it is? What's the deeper fear? What would that mean if you said no and they're assuming you'll say yes? What's the deeper fear? What would that mean? Be in that inquiry. That's the first place I'd invite you to go here because the self-illumination really always is the key. Like, and there's gold to be reclaimed in these wounds. Like, Remember too that when things like this crop up, they are beautiful examples of what I call material for our liberation. So when we're working with these remedies, we will get the exact material that we need to help us heal the patterns that we so want to heal. And the invitation is to go inwards, to ask the questions, to illuminate more around what's coming up. So it's like they're offering us a playground for us to trial things. So they're offering us an initiation. This, the, the thing that's made you ask the question it's like a trigger and a place to look at your wound and initiation. So go into inquiry, use it as an example to help you illuminate more about the deeper deeper patterns. What would be so bad about them assuming you'll say yes? Which part of you is fearing that? What's the old story that has you nervous to express your truth in the midst of their assumptions? And can you love your little girl in that, in that fear? More practically, um, there's almost like two ways that you could go with this. There's like kind of like a she-wolf remedy answer to this, as well as a pulse tiller answer, depending on where you're at in your journey. And um, because we also don't need to provide someone a reason why we have a no. 
there's an element of this is my boundary and and that's very she wolf like the wild woman um like a wild no that needs to be honored and we will kind of often wobble around a bit there when we first come to this work going into the more wild rebellious sod you answers like the yeah the she wolf expression that's normal and it's part of the path so it's welcome but there's also the pulsatilla vulnerable expression piece that's, that's coming in here so i'd say firstly what's your current expression like do you tend to be on the side of the pole that's like quieter and kind of would find it healing to step into a bit of a wilder expression like would you typically say no without providing an explanation because it can be healing if you're not usually in that expression that wild expression to try that out at your soft edge that kind of like no and not providing an explanation or are you typically wilder and more armored and could do with the healing piece around vulnerability softening sharing your feelings in which case you could try sharing how you're feeling like i feel xyz so my heart is feeling that this is a no we're still not justifying we're just sharing our feelings so see what feels most juicy and aligned and needed for you in that um but it's a great great question and i do love when women ask me questions for my solo episodes it feels really um really really gorgeous to speak live to things that are coming up for women so please do if you haven't joined us we have um a gorgeous group and there are invitations weekly in there as well to help you with the self-illumination part of the journey around the themes that we're exploring each month this time is actually self-illumination synchronistically i believe um but yeah join us join us in there ask questions vote for the topic that we speak to in this episode and uh be with us in sisterhood we also have um a manifesting with the moon event each month where we gather in live ceremony for new moon for healing so um this is my invitation to you i'm gonna leave it there um is such a juicy one i would love to hear if you've journeyed with any of the things that i've talked about in this episode i'd love 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 to hear um yeah how it went what you noticed particularly the self-illumination it's very very juicy um so either join the group and share in there or um you're welcome to email me as well all the information will be um in the in the show notes um so yeah I'm going to leave it there and I will see you next time. Lots of love. Go gently. What a juicy episode. Here are my key takeaways. People pleasing is often a sign of being a healer because healers commonly want to help people. It's also a wounded pattern learned in childhood, possibly when our own needs weren't met and we shamed our needs and learned to put them last. We leak our true healing power by people pleasing especially if we're here to be healers of others often we will go into rescuer mode loving self-illumination is the key to beginning to heal this pattern noticing what's underneath our automatic unconscious way of relating in the world this way is really powerful to help us begin to liberate ourselves the other important thing in reclaiming our inner people pleaser is learning to show up vulnerably and share our truth and our own needs The feminine expresses her feelings rather than rebelling and being a tyrant who sets hard outer boundaries. It's our energetic inner boundaries that matter most. What do we need? What do we desire? If we don't heal this wounding, we will end up quick fixing people instead of allowing the people who come to us for healing to experience their own initiations and reclaim their gold. If you'd like to get the show notes and links for everything we've chatted about in this episode, head to www.secretwitch.co.uk. If you know a secret witch who would love this episode, please share with them to help them liberate themselves. And so you don't miss out on next week's episode, head to your podcast app of choice and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.